Well, it's only five days before the deadline on public comment on the Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Bill. In December, Justice Minister Ronald Lamolla briefed the country on the developments towards the decriminalization of sex work in South Africa. This bill, or the purpose of the bill, is to repeal the Sexual Offences Act of 1957. Meanwhile, some civil society organizations and communities have raised concerns about the impact this may have on a developing country like South Africa, which is already laden with social ills. Other concerns raised include the fact that decriminalization does not make prostitution safe. Instead, this could open young people to sexual exploitation. This morning we're joined by human rights lawyer and activist Dr. Pearl Okupe, who is uh, going to discuss this with us and talk to the benefits and perhaps the not so benefits that we can see coming out of this. Um, Dr. Kupe, it's great to have you. Thanks very, very much for being with us here on the program. Thank you very much, Leanne. It's a pleasure and a good morning to all the viewers out there. Um, you've laid a very good foundation in terms of the proposed bill, uh, which was released on December the 9th. And as you said, the deadline date is um, just coming up on the 31st of January. Um, I think it's of vital importance that all South Africans make sure that they make submissions and um, make sure that their voice is heard. Yeah. As citizens, you have a right to be part of uh, legislative formation and you need to make sure that your voice is heard so that we don't complain afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, Leanne, I'm, I'm almost not sure if there's much I can say because you've articulated I, a lot a of bit, the reasons. Quite a, quite a bit that we can say because I mean yeah. I think a lot of people perhaps sure. are not necessarily too familiar with uh, with yeah. what the proposals in the bill are. So, so we've got until the That's 31st sure. to comment. So let us talk about the proposed bill to legalize prostitution. What is it all about? Give us a little bit of background and the reasons advanced for yeah. the country to reach this decision. Absolutely. Well, first of all, let me say, Leanne, that this is not a new um, bill. It's not a new move. There have been organizations such as SWEAT, um, which is an association that represents sex workers. Sisonke have been pushing for this for quite a long time, way back. I remember when I was first involved in this way back in 2010, um, they've been pushing for this. And really, essentially, one of the main reasons they are articulating for the move for this bill is that they are alleging that it is to protect the safety of uh, those who are involved in prostitution. And um, that's one of the things that we actually want to raise as civil society, as NGOs, to say that not only is it not going to protect sex workers or prostitutes, but it's actually going to further endanger them. Because now you're making it legal. Uh, prostitution, when you look at it and study it, it's linked to a number of other activities. It's not just prostitution. It's linked to drug trafficking and drugs. Um, you know, many of the pimps who are involved are, are, are violent. They, they give the sex workers, prostitutes, alcohol. Um, they give them drugs. Uh, there's a, a, almost a mafia syndication around what is a multi-billion dollar business. This is a multi-billion dollar business that really exploits women. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on in terms of what do I mean by the exploitation of women. But in terms of the history, it's not new. Yeah. There's been a push for it to go on. And the main push is to say, to allege that it's for the protection of um, the prostitutes. It's not going to protect them. It's going to further endanger them. And this is of great concern because a lot of people are speaking to this and that's why the public comment side of things is very, very important so they can get their views across. But perhaps you can make us understand the difference between decriminalization and full criminalizing. What, what, is, what is between that? Well, criminalization essentially means that whenever you, um, you know, commit or perform something, um, if it's criminalized, then you will bear the consequences. There are justice legal consequences for, for you know, neglecting a law. For instance, if you do not wear your seatbelt, you, you, you can be fined. And, you know, um, if you do it consistently, you can even wind up in jail. So when you decriminalize a law, 
law. It essentially means it's now legal. So decriminalization is probably just a fancy word for saying legalization. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bill is actually referred to as, um, you know, the bill to legalize prostitution. So it will be really legalizing prostitution. But like I say, prostitution is not something that happens on its own. It's got a number of other activities that are linked to it. So when you legalize prostitution, you are in essence also legalizing a number of other things. And let me talk to that. You know, Leanne, I, I worked for many years um, with an, inst an institution, international organization called ILO, the International Labor Organization. And the International Labor Organization has been at the forefront of fighting labor and sex trafficking. Um, they have developed recommendations, conventions, dealing with a global war uh, around sex trafficking. And those of us in the SADC nation, Lesotho, Botswana, and South Africa, will know that there's a ring, um, a, a particular syndicate that operates very effectively in terms of trafficking people for labor purposes and for sex purposes. Now, what we will essentially be drew, doing in this instance is opening the door. We are currently not winning the war, Leanne, against sex trafficking. And now when you legalize prostitution, yeah. it's going to make it all the more difficult. It's going to mean we are inviting everybody who's coming from another nation where prostitution is illegal, um, all the pimps, all the prostitutes will come from the other, other nations to, to come here. It will attract pimps, um, human traffickers, etc. In our malls, Leanne, we are people, human traffickers, sex traffickers are already scouting the malls. I have confronted at least three of them. Now, I live in Pretoria East. And I, because I'm a former prosecutor, I can recognize their tactics. Yeah. They come up to young girls and they pretend that, you know, they tell them how beautiful you are. Don't you want to model? And that's their modus operandi. And when every young girl wants to model and then they take them away and, and allegedly to model. And that's where they get them hooked on drugs, yeah. all sorts of uh, drugs. And then they turn them into um, prostitutes yeah. who are hooked onto drugs. So we will be opening up our nation. Currently, most of us do not want to go to Hillbrow. So effectively, what we will be doing is making the whole of South Africa a giant Hillbrow. It's frightening. I mean, what you're telling us is absolutely frightening. And, you know, this is this is the reality of what is happening on a daily basis. Dr. Coupe, very quickly, because we've got to wrap this up, but the implications of the bill. I mean, you've spoken to us about the negative negativity around it and how we could be opening ourselves up to so many problems. We really can. And we do understand. I mean, South Africa is unfortunately, it's a playground for a lot of bad things to happen. And a lot of people People blame it on the fact that the, the, the policing is something that is just not there. You're not able to initiate these things and control these things. And then it opens up to people that come in that have very negative impacts on the people in South Africa. So the implications of this bill for the nation and for other stakeholders, including families and communities of those that are involved in sex work themselves, I mean, are there any positives at all? Because we have really outlined the negatives and that's frightening. Yeah. But in terms of yeah. the bill, some positives? <laughs> I don't, I, I, I can't see, honestly speaking, I can't see any positives coming from it. For a nation that has even talked about having a plan for moral regeneration. Uh, but Leanne, I want to focus on a little bit right now because it sounds like, you know, we're very anti-prostitutes. No, I actually want to talk also on behalf of the prostitutes to say this, to say that they are valuable members of the community. And we as South Africa, we have signed, we are signatory to regional protocols on gender, the SADC protocol on gender. We are um, signatory to protocols on the African Charter on human and people's rights, on rights of women. And one of the things that those articles do is they want to protect the health and the dignity of women. And I would like to say, I don't see how legalizing um, a, a situation where some women are made to sleep with up to 10 men, 10 men in one day, they're opening themselves up to serious diseases, um, you know, all sorts of diseases that can be contracted. They're opening themselves up to violence, being beaten by their 
pimps and they can be beaten now legally because we've legalized it. Yeah. So they're opening themselves up to public health issues. It's a crime safety and health security issue for our nation where we're opening ourselves up to drug laws. And dignity is something that every woman uh, deserves. And Article 3 of the Protocol on African Charter on Human Rights says that every woman must have a right to dignity. That's inherent to human being. Um, every woman shall be respected as a person. I don't see how legalizing prostitution will help us in that. As a government and as a nation, we need to make sure that they're safe. We need to make sure that they're skilled, taken off the streets. They are skilled, they're trained, they're equipped so that they can have their dignity like other people and, and, and work at good jobs. The government needs to ensure that they have good employment offers. Yeah. So it's not that we're insensitive to them, Indeed. but we're saying give them their right to dignity as so, well. Dr. Cooper, finally, and just a, just a website, where do we comment? How, how do we do this? Where do the public get involved in the public com in the, the comment? Because it ends on the 31st, which is next week. Right. You can co you can comment um, directly to the department itself. So you can write attention, and that's at the chief directorate of legislative development, the director general justice and constitutional development, private bag X81 Pretoria. Um, the email address is capital B I L S one at justice.gov.za. You can also go to our website. We have a website and that will help you. There are templates there that will help you through the legalese and the process. www.thedeboras972, one word, the Deboras, T-H-E-D-E-B-O-R-A-H-S dot uh, org. Dot org, and all you can right. get all the information there. You okay. can also go to the D Dear South Africa platform and you can also submit directly on the Dear South Africa um, platform. So come on, South Africa, get knuckled. Let's do this <laughs> and let's get involved in legislating. <laughs> all right, Dr. Cooper, thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. So yo, that was uh, a human rights lawyer and activist, Dr. Pearl Cooper, talking to us about the government's proposed bill to decriminalize sex work.